Irish seafood. Easy to prepare and easy to cook for everyday meals. Today on my seafood trails, I'm in Galway, and I'm starting with a trip to catch lobsters with Kieran Oliver, departing from Clada Key, right in the heart of the city. So there's been great tradition of fishing here yes, in this part of Galway. For centuries, for centuries. Yeah. Actually, Clada actually dates back to the 12th century. And is this something you've been doing all your life yourself? Yes, our family. My father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, we've been fishing and part of this community. So tell me about your tour. We do tours for the tourist market and for locals, and we train youngsters and the sea scouts. One aspect of the tour is the lobster safari. We partnered with a local restaurant, so we're going, uh, going to go catch some lobsters, and this is a regular tour, catch some lobsters and later eat them in the restaurant. You're a commercial fisherman, which is... Yes, so our family are commercial fishermen, my, my brother, my uncles, myself, and, uh, and so we catch lobsters commercially and we, we sell them to restaurants and some go for export. There's the hookers, the old fishing boats of the Clada. The boats are about 300 years old, right, the design. There would have been a lot of European trade here into Galway. Galway was the gateway to Europe, right, three or 400 years ago. We were importing wine and we were exporting fish, even back then. Hook and line fishing would have been the primary method of fishing, which is where the concept or the idea was taken from. And later nets and pots and creels and, and whatever. They're now used for leisure and pleasure and racing and regattas. And, and we're actually involved in a, in a community organization that's helping to promote these local boats and get kids out sailing them in the next generation so they can kind of live on. So we're going out for lobsters, so what would be the season for catching lobsters? Late April, May, they kind of start as the temperature rises, you know, they come out of hibernation because they hibernate for the winter. We could catch them up until the end of October, maybe. We then have another season over the winter months, which is the common prawn. We'll probably catch a few of them today. Though. And would you export a lot of your lobster and shrimp? We, we do, shrimp certainly, and, and some uh, lobsters are sold locally, you know, in, in, to some establishments or whatever, but, but a lot of it does go for export, yeah. yeah. There's nothing beats yeah. our blue lobster yeah, yeah. here. The Europeans, the French, the Spanish, they, they, they love the Atlantic, the Galway Bay lobster, the Atlantic lobster. Because I think it is such a unique uh, taste and texture. You show me how to cook one. Uh, yeah. yeah. We just boil it in a pot. That's know, okay. That, uh, Do you know what I think works well with lobsters? A bit of orange rind and a little bit of um, fennel seed works really well. And how many people would you have in the tour when you're... Uh, we boat. take 12 on this boat. Our other vessels take five or six people out for like if it's a smaller group. It's just to show this is what's out here with the partnership with the local restaurant. They can go in later and have their set menu. So they go out and they catch the lobster yes, with yourselves. Yeah, and then later go and, go and uh, have Eat it for, it for dinner. Yeah. It's lovely for a family to do that and children and all. Yeah, it's so of course. You know, and I think, yeah, we take out school groups from time to time. We'd pull a lobster and be, we, we might have like dogfish in it, starfish, crabs, brown crab, velvet crabs. I like the whole interactive, hands-on kind of approach. We're just approaching the We're pot. Here. Where is she, Diff? Lovely. Okay, Levin, okay. job for you. <laughs> you hook the boy. Just keep a look over the side. Yeah, go on. Okay, there she is now. Okay. 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 Now. Will right. I help you pull? We'll pull them up. Okay. Right. you get dirty. I'm right. not afraid of dirt. And how deep are we here now? Uh, we're in about five or six metres of water. All right. So. You don't wear gloves? Nah. Just used to it. Yeah. Just hands like leather. Oh, yeah, there's the first one. Oh, I love it. Jackpot! Wow. Oh, oh you crab. The spider, that one. Beautiful. Oh, look at it. Lobster. Beautiful. And you don't wear gloves? They'd look good. No, uh, we would if we were baiting the pots or something. That's as live as you'll get. Where do you just drop them in? Yeah, I just put them in tail, tail first. Tail we just first. keep them separate so they won't go okay. each other. Okay. There's a spider crab. Look at that. Wow. So what's the bait? So we've uh, herrings. Herrings, so this, okay. This fella. This oh, fella. that's a nice that's one. A that's juicy, a beauty. Juicy. That's a juicy one. A couple of kilo there. Yeah. Come on. So that goes in there too? That goes in there. We just keep them separate there until we get the bands on them. The shrimp season is about to start, so we've this out for a kind of a tester pot, just to see okay. how the size and stuff like that. Would you do this now on the tours? Just uh, like, oh, yeah, so we'd have maybe two pots on the tours. Oh, look at it. We get a basket there, guys. Lovely. Not so bad. Look at it. Yeah, they're a decent size, medium prawn. Yeah. Nice for a prawn cocktail. One more pot here, Nevin. It was a heavy one. It must be a big one in this. I think I bought you luck today, Kieran. Yeah, I'd have to come out here more often. Uh, Lovely. 
What have we got? Another couple of small ones in there. So the lobsters go in the far end, is it in there? Yeah, so yeah. they're going in like there's a, like a little ramp. Look, it's like a little ramp yes. at the entrance there. So they're attracted by the bait. When would you put that down? Four or five days. Also. Okay. This is a gauge so for our lobsters. Conservation measures. Very the important. minimum landing size for lobsters for us is 87 millimeters. So we measure here from the back of the ice socket. So that guy is under, so he gets returned to the sea for sustainability. Of course. So here's a female lobster, right? Okay, got the eggs on it. But here's an interesting point, right? So we've got uh, a V-notch. So we V-notch the tails. It's a V-notch scheme. What this means is when we when we take a clip out of the tail like this, this lobster then can't be sold, right? Or can't be, can't be caught legally and, and sold. It takes about four years for that to grow out of that lobster. So then she can go on, obviously, to have these babies. And... Want to get some uh, bands on the lobsters? Get that on the end there, so leave it closed. Would they give you an nip? Silly question. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. certainly. They're strong for this. Lovely job. These guys in here. Get them ready for the pot of a different sort, I suppose, of a different type. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. We're going to just prevent them drying out, so we'll just put them in like that. Right? We'll just get a bucket of water and we'll just soak okay. them, and that keeps them, keeps them fresh, keeps them alive. Lovely. Kieran, you kind of forget how hard your you work, fishermen. So we have to do it justice. That's them there now. Dampen them down a bit, keep them from drying out, and we, uh, we'll go shoot our pots again. En voyage. And in a go. There you go. Bye. Adios. Fantastic. Till the next day. Till the next day. All right, Dave. What's on? Kieran runs his tours in conjunction with Rouge, one of the city's restaurants, and customers take their lobsters back to the chef who cooks them. Today, the chef has come to the quayside here in the Clada. We've had such a great morning out in the boat fishing lobsters with Kieran. What a guy. So you're going to show me how you cook yours in Rouge? Yes, I'm going to cook the, a half lobster for you today. So what have you done already? So I've split the lobster in half, removed the legs mm -hmm. and the claws, and just prepared it then for a saute, you know? So a little bit of oil into the pan, and a little bit of butter as well. Now there's something in that butter, what is it? That's a garlic and herb butter. So there is tarragon and parsley and a little bit of garlic in there. And I'm just going to brush, brush the lobster it. with the butter. Lovely. And the claws are kind of smashed. The claws I've broken, broken, yeah, just to help get the heat in there and let the butter soak in. Cut side down. Cut side down, mm -hmm. yeah. And with the claws there as well. Thank you. Gorgeous. Now how long do you cook this for? 30 seconds to a minute on this side. So oh, is this a dish you're on the menu in Rouge? It is, yes, yeah. You turn it over. Turn it over there now, yeah. A little bit of colour there, and I'll baste that again with the butter, just to stop it from drying out, and cover that there to, to help it cook. OK, so that's going to so speed, gonna up, gonna a speed up a little bit of cooking there now, yeah. This pan, then, I'm going to start with some shallots for a lemon beurre blanc. The juice of half a lemon there, in on top of the shallots. Preheated pan? Preheated pan, yes, yeah. In with a little bit of white wine. Cook that down a little bit there now. This dish would be on the menu, so when they come from the tour with Kieran, do they go to the restaurant in Rouge? They do, and yeah. When they, when they catch a lobster out there, they can come in to us and we'll cook it up for them. So I'm just going to add some cream in here now Just to some sauce. regular cream? Regular okay. double cream, yeah. There's your whisk if you need it. Lovely, thank you. So again, I'll just let that uh, come up to a slight simmer. Do you always serve it with a sauce in Rouge? Generally, we just serve it with the, with the garlic butter. That's it, natural. Yeah, just natural, yeah. Sauce is coming up to a simmer there now. So I'll just whisk in some of the cubes of cold butter, a couple at a time three at a time there. The butter is cold, so uh, when you whisk it into the hot liquid, then you have, it helps to emulsify it. Of course. And that will kind of thicken up the sauce a little bit. The sauce Lovely. is kind of ready Happy there now. Yeah. Yep. And make and a bit of room. Up. Yeah. So how do you know when it's cooked? Um, well, the shell will, uh, will change colour there. It'll go a nice red colour, okay. like that. When the meat is kind of firm and white like that and cooked through, that's it. Will I help you? Yes, yeah. There we go. Doesn't get fresher than this. No, Just no. caught it two, five minutes out in the ocean. So would this yeah. be a normal serving? Depending on the size of the lobster, you know, of if course. it's very big, we'll serve just half. And would you normally serve any vegetables? We do, yeah. We have side dishes with it. What I'm serving with it today is just a, a nice little salad, just some mixed, uh, some mixed leaves and some okay. onion and some cherry tomatoes. Lovely colours as well. Yeah, exactly. So now, ready for tasting. And it's just flaking away, beautifully cooked. I want to taste some of your lovely sauce. Oh. That's a great combination. It's really tender, moist, delicious to think that the lobster just caught behind us in Galway Bay, cooked in the clatter. Well done, Dave. Thanks so much. Thank Gentlemen, you very much, Nan. Keep up Thank the you. great work. Whiting is a really good fish. It's plentiful, good value, and a really delicate flavour. And in this recipe, I'm going to crispy fry it, serve it with some apple and mango salad. Really tasty and really quick. That's the beautiful thing about it. So it's filleted, no bones, no skin. It's gonna be delicious. Before I show you the really crispy, lovely coating for that, I'm gonna do a little bit of a salad. Some mango and some apple. 
And remember, mango has a flat stone in the middle. So that's more than enough for me here. And then cut this. And I'm using a smaller knife, probably a little bit safer. Slide this back here. So it's lovely and sweet and will work really well. Then we're gonna cut this into little sticks. So very, very thinly cut it. And this is what we call a little baton. Small little strips of fresh mango. You can, if you want to, put a little bit of lemon zest or lime zest, a little bit of chili oil, because that gives great flavor. You can make a little bit of salsa with this, but we're gonna keep it just very simple. So that's more than enough there. A little bit of apple, and apple is great. You think an apple with fish? I'm not sure. This is a nice, firm, sweet apple. So it's gonna give great crunch and great texture. And then into little strips. So if you gather it all up, so the mango can be done ahead, but the apple has to be done fresh. Great crunch, delicious. Okay, on to our coating. So we have plain flour in here, a little bit of chili powder, some curry powder. I'm using mild curry powder in this, and then some sesame seeds. And then you mix this all together. You can actually put this into a bag and give it a really good shake, and you can keep it in your fridge. So this is our whiting, little goujons. In here, all I've done is just some cream, the juice of one lemon, and two egg whites, and you blend it just in a little hand blender. You can use a Nutribullet, and that's all that's in there. So that just goes in here, three or four of them. Keep one hand in the cream and egg mixture, and then the other hand here. So what you need to do, just completely press in the flour. See the way I'm doing that? Just with the back of the hand. Turn it over, make sure it's all completely coated. And that's it done. We're going to cook it in a wok with a little bit of oil. So a good tip for you, I'll just get a little bit of basil and then I'm gonna wash my hands. And this will go in and when the basil begins to crackle, so just be careful. So that's a sign that the oil is hot enough. So just be careful with this. Here it's sizzling. So this is just some vegetable oil I'm using and they'll cook so fast. I'm gonna show you a very quick mayonnaise, some regular shop-bought mayonnaise, a little bit of red curry paste, put a spoonful of that, and then some lime juice. So a little squeeze of this, and I'm gonna use the same whisk that I use for the flour. Save on the wash-up. Now it looks great. Nice bit of color from the red curry paste, and of course the lime juice gives a great refreshment. We're gonna lift these out. So literally only take a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna cut into one and show you, just with the knife. Beautiful, moist, cooks quick. It's a great little dish. So we'll serve this up. What I've done, and this is kind of a very chefy thing, a squeezy bottle is a great thing because it just makes the mayonnaise, and this is the mayonnaise in it, just come out a little bit easier. So you can have this as a lovely little starter for having a dinner party, something like that. And then we just arrange just three. Then we're lovely salad. And you just sprinkle this just all over, and then the mango. So it's a really interesting combination. You have the crispness of the apple, the sweetness and the softness of the mango, and then the lovely heat from the curry mayonnaise. A couple of little salad leaves, and these are just some microgreens here. A rocket would work really well. A couple of edible flowers. You have viola, a little bit of borage, beautiful. Everything's edible bar the plate. And then a couple of little chai sticks. You have texture, you have flavor. So there's a very easy dish, great texture, and a great showcase for whiting. Board Beer, bringing Irish seafood to the world.
Board Beer. Bringing Irish seafood to the world. If you like fresh fish and you're lucky enough to live near a fishmonger, make sure you support them. But if you don't live near a fishmonger, you can now buy beautiful fresh fish online. Gannett Fishmongers in Galway City is Ireland's largest online fishmonger. Stefan Griesbach supplies restaurants and households throughout the country with fresh, sustainably caught Irish fish, including some lesser known but equally delicious species that are definitely worth a try. In Ireland, we've a lot of trawlers, okay, and they're catching their mixed bags of fish. And my point here is like, no, eat more fish, but eat more of the fish. Just don't eat cod, just don't eat egg, but just try to eat the full catch. Let's not export everything or throw out fish, trying to make the best out of what we catch. And this is really sustainable for me. You have a, a fabulous display of fish, some I've never heard of. Like there's one there, you know, the Sweaty Betty. Tell me yeah, about this well, one. Sweaty I, Betty, the official name is a fork beard. It looks similar to hake, is it? It's similar to egg. I compare it often between haddock and red mullet. When it's cooked, the texture is slightly like red mullet, but with the flavor of haddock. It's a lovely fish. It used to be trash. We're not eating enough whiting. It's a fabulous fish. You have it skinned, pin bone. Well, it's fantastic. Yeah. Whiting is good for children. Like, no, it's cheap, inexpensive fish. We can debone it, we can skin it. It's very versatile. People have that concept of whiting being full of bones and tasteless. Well, we're kind of trying to prove like no, the opposite. Like now these are very interesting. White fish goujon. Simple to cook, a little bit better of breadcrumb. If you make it in the pan, there's no bones, there's no skins. So it'll suit everybody, like no children and grown up who are a bit afraid of fish. And is it one variety here or a mix? With yeah. a bit of a mix, it depends on like, you know, it's catch of the day. So like no, one week we'll have haddock, another week we'll have um, egg or we'll have cod, depending on what the catch. Like, uh, we tend to use smaller size fish, part of the fish, to make goujon. On the other part, we use it into our fish mix. Oh, what's but, this one uh, here? So that's a collie. Everybody's familiar with collie in Ireland as a smoke collie. The real name of collie is black pollock. Nobody eats fresh black pollock. But with a bit of effort here, we've actually created a demand in the market for more customers to that fish because it's lovely. Again, no bone, no skin, and it's very flavorsome. You need to know how to cook it. This is the thing. That's why we have to give recipe. A fish like this needs to be brined. Oh. You brine it a little bit for like 10 minutes, it firms up the fish, and then you start cooking it again. When you do your markers, would you have this display of fish? Different setup, but will be the same selection. Our point is we try to sell whatever we can buy. You have a couple of markers, and you, you, you have an electric we car, I'm told. You have an electric van as well. We're very much focused on the environment. The electric van wasn't very expensive to buy, and now we're on the road for free. Nearly, like, no, it's a great little machine. It's lovely to drive as well. Like, you know. Stefan, this is a very interesting fish, the Red Gurnard. One of those fish that, like, no, not known in Ireland. It's very tasty. It's a medium oily fish. Fisherman would be trying it out, like, no, unless we create a demand for it. So it's a lovely little fillet, and it'll go, like, no, nicely pan fry or in a curry. When your customers come in here, you'll fill it, you'll pin bone, you'll do the whole thing so people won't be intimidated getting a fish like that. We're fishmongers, so we'll fillet anything on that display. It's part of, like, no, part of what we do. And what about the conger eel? Quite bony. We cannot remove the bone on the conger eel, I have to be honest. But it's full of flavor. Back home in front, we use that fish for soup. Boil it into, like, you know, you make soup with it, liquidize it, a few tomatoes, celery, some fennel, and saffron, and that's it. Fish soup is made, like, you know. So, and Stefan, the online, how does it work? The online started about three years ago, where we, like, you now we had people coming to us at the market, traveling from places like Tipperary, Athlone. So we just kind of said, okay, like, you no, know, let's try to make it a little bit easier for them on others to get our fish. So we spent about two years trying to, try to develop a website and trying to find a system which like, you know, be bulletproof so that customers can get fresh fish in within 24 hours. So people order before 2 p.m., get their home delivery in the, the following day, or we also have a different system which is called a click and collect. So we have a network of butchers and shops around the country with about 20 of them at the moment. People will order from us online small amount of fish and get it delivered to their local every week. The idea is great because it means they're getting fresh fish all the time. And it's a way for us as independent um, artisan to work with other independent artisans as well. So when people order, Stefan, you fill it, bone it, whatever they want? Whatever they want, just like if they were to come here. Like, you know, so they will buy a portion of turbot which is a set weight. We give them the price per kilo so they can compare our prices with like, no, maybe their local shop. And then we give them a number of options on how we will prepare the fish for them. So they can have the turbot without the head. They can have the turbot skin. We can have the turbot trim, filleted. It all depends what they want. And exactly. it's all about presets. So it's just like coming here, but like, no, online 24 hours. That's genius. Good, yeah, thank you. I think you're fantastic, you and your team. Yeah, Thanks for having me here. David. Keep thank up the great work. Thank, thank you. you.
Oscar Seafood Bistro has been part of Galway's restaurant scene for many years, and its owner is head chef Michael O'Mara. Michael, thank you for having me in your kitchen. Devin, good to see you again. So what dish are you going to cook for me today? What I want to do is a lovely healthy uh, type dish, which is using beans, lots of vegetables, and a lovely fish called Red Gurnard, also known as Sea Robins. With this dish, I'm going to get my pot. I'm going to put a little Ooh, nice bit of oil into it, and I'm going to put some onions, okay. a few carrots, mm. red pepper, a little bit of celery, and some leeks. All pre-chopped. Stir those around a little bit. Now, this is something you have to be careful with. I'm going to use a thing called a heavenly euro chili. Ooh. Now, we'll put a little bit of chili directly in. So how much are you putting in there? A couple of grams. Use them extremely cautiously. Heavenly euros, they'll take the head off you. They're, um, they've got a lovely flavor to them. Yeah. Unlike many of the other chilies, okay. you can taste that they're there. Also into this, I'm going to put a wee bit of fennel seed, a little bit of black pepper, building up the spice into yeah. this, add a little bit of water. Next into that, put some what of these, these lovely now? millhouse organic tomatoes, just little pockets of flavor. I'm going to put a generous amount of garlic. Now, I've pureed this with a tad of oil, about a full bulb of garlic. What I'm going to use here is a lovely little selection of beans, chickpeas, red kidney beans, canola beans, balotis. I've soaked them overnight in cold water, take them out, drain them, wash them into a pot with lightly salted water, cook them until they just become tender. Pop those in, it's a little bit of chopped tomato, just normal tin, good quality. Tinned tomatoes. Finally, I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika. I love that. Great ingredient, isn't it? Isn't it? Top it up till I cover the beans with a little bit of water. You don't need stocks or anything else. There's loads of veg. This in itself yeah, yeah. would be a gorgeous little vegetarian yeah. dish. And let them simmer away for about half an hour. This is the Gurnard, little shellfish feeder. Some fish are better to come from the top when you're filleting. Gurnard is better to start from the belly area. I'm just going to remove the fillet. So just take it off like so. This is one of the round fish. Mm -hmm. It's a bottom dweller. Trim the belly just a little bit, and then you just have a few little pin bones up along here. Yeah. Now, you could use a little pin boner and take them out. What we'll do is do a little bit of surgery. The Gurnard is a close relative to the scorpion fish. It's not actually one of the scorpion fish, but there's a lot of sharp spines, so just be a little careful in that. What I'm doing okay. is taking out those little few bones there. And of course, your fishmonger would do this. Fishmongers will do everything. I've got a little pan heating here, mm -hmm. and what I'm going to use is, this is Connemara Seaweed Company. It's a selection of sugar kelp, wakami, or weed, Kombu is what the Japanese call it, and dillisk. A little bit of um, sea salt in there, and some, um, just a little bit of black pepper. Gorgeous. It's about 60% of seaweed This That allows me to completely reduce my salt. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw a tiny, like literally a quarter dribble of olive oil into the pan. I don't need a lot, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you put the garnard down. I'll put this over here so you can actually see what I'm doing. You see how little oil I've used? That's all I need. I don't want a big fatty dish. So I'm going to get a little drop of water, I'm just going to pop that on, like that. There's enough residual heat in that pan to finish that fish. So I could just leave that off and come back in 10 minutes and it would be cooked. And it will not overcook. Could you cook paddock, white? Every type of fish. Pan it's steaming. Great. And because it's a relatively low temperature, not frying and frying yeah, and frying, yeah. and protecting those fatty acids. This is the casserole you made earlier. That's been cooked down. And that'll hold for a number of days in your fridge. Okay. Just, you could even eat it cold as a salad. Mm, that's tasty. I'm going to just put okay. a couple of spoonfuls in the pan with the fish, and essentially poaching this fish a little bit more water in that, about so much water. It doesn't matter, because I want it nice and moist. And I'm going to just tear a little piece of this lovely spinach, just locally grown spinach. So you're going to wilt that. We're just going to cover this over with the lid, and I'm going to let it build up a little bit of heat for a few seconds, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to push it to the side. And, and that's it. Let the residual heat take care of it. Of course it is. Wow, it's brilliant. And what and else are you making here? Now, what I'm going to do is this zog, which is a lovely little um, sauce, whole green chilli. Alapino, you could take the seeds out, and there's a tremendous lot of chili in this, and you're going to get a bit worried I, about I, it at I'm first. Just, uh, this is... <laughs> then okay. I'm going to use lightly toasted cumin. I just got the cumin seeds, put them on a dry pan, gave them a little bit of a toss, just a little bit of garlic. This has been blended with a pad of oil just to get it nice and pureed, so the liquidizer is something to catch. And yes, we're using a lot of garlic as well, and you think this sauce would never work. Tad of salt. I don't want to make it too seasoned, and lemon juice. I froze because when you're using these liquidizers, they create a lot of heat. So if you freeze your lemon juice, it keeps the sauce a little bit fresher. Some olive oil. Mm -hmm. I have a guy called Brave Bull who brings it in from Spain, yeah. and it's a little small village co-op. Three or four guys with little yeah. farms, yeah. and they're more like a juice almost than an olive oil. Into that, blend it up. And here I have coriander, a little bit of flat leaf parsley because yeah. it kind of takes the edge off the garlic a little bit, mm -hmm. and a few sprigs of mint. And blend it up. Zog, isn't it a great name? And this, there we go. This is totally new for me now. I'm just going to have a wee tasting. Yes, OK. Cumin seems very to fresh. cut through it, and it's really zingy. We'll do a little unveiling. 
Look with a little that. bit of spinach. And this is how I like to serve it. I just get it like that. You just pour it in like that. Ah, well, Brilliant. And lazy. Put a dollop of the zog on top. I'll just use it straight from here. These are just a few little leaves so just to put them on the top. And away you go. If you like, you can just put a little drizzle of olive oil. And that's it. Done. Fantastic. Michael, can we taste this? <laughs> it's just flaking away the fish. I'm going to taste a little bit of everything now. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's it really so fresh needs... to zog. There's a lovely balance of heat if my mouth is not burning. Yeah, you'd delicious. think with the amount of chilli oh. used, the Arabic cuisines, they seem to have nailed how to get that subtleness, the freshness oh. of the zog, Beautiful mixes dish. with the cooked dish. Beautiful. You're a gent. Thank you so much. Great having Great you. Dish. Thank, Thank you. you. Irish seafood. Easy to prepare and easy to cook for everyday meals.